afternoon. This is Robin Harvey, Vice Chair of the Equity Committee. I now call to order the February 22nd, 2024 meeting of the Equity Committee of the Board of Education of Baltimore County. In accordance with Board Policy 8311, I'm sorry, there's some background noise. If everyone could mute, please. In accordance with the Board Policy 8311, the chair of a committee at their discretion and after consultation with the staff liaison may convene an in-person committee meeting. Otherwise, all committee meetings will be held electronically. Today's meeting is being held virtually and broadcast through Microsoft Teams. In order to efficiently conduct this meeting, committee members will state their name before speaking. Ms. Seabolt, please call the role of board members to determine the presence of a quorum of the committee. Good afternoon, um, Dr. Savoy. Ms. Harvey. Present. Ms. Drummond. Ms. Frempong. Present. Ms. Lichter. Present. Ms. Delusky. Present. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Siebel. Will you now please call the role of staff members on the equity committee participating in today's meeting? Yes, uh, Mr. Handy. Present. Ms. Charlie Green. Present. All right, thank you. Thank you, Ms. Seabolt. Okay, the first item on the agenda is review of policy 0100. And for that, I call on Mr. Douglas Handy. All right, thank you, Ms. Harvey. All right, so uh, next slide, please. Thank you. So, um, as Ms. Harvey stated, we are here to review policy 0100 equity. I uh, just want to frame uh, today's meeting. Uh, we will uh, review the policy as stated. Uh, we'll also discuss rec recommendations that uh, were received by uh, the February 5th Policy Review Committee um, at that meeting. So some of our members here of the Equity Committee are also uh, members of that uh, Policy Review Committee or PRC. Um, I will do a review of the timeline so we're all on the same page and all caught up. Um, and then really our goal for today is to provide input to make requested revisions um, after we've done a thorough review of the policy and then um, you know looked at what was said from that policy review committee meeting on February 5th. Uh, next slide, please. So just to review our timeline um, with the policy 0100, which is under revision, um, it was presented uh, on February 5th, 2024 at the policy review committee uh, meeting. Uh, during that meeting, it was decided that the policy 0100 will be sent to uh, the equity committee for additional review. And that's why we are here today with today's agenda. Um, the policy will return to the PRC for review and approval uh, to send to the full board for first reader. So some of our considerations for today's meeting, we want to uh, think back to that PRC meeting um, what were the concerns that were raised at that meeting? Um, based on those concerns, uh, what revisions were requested? Uh, next, we want to uh, think about those concerns, uh, how have they been addressed thus far? So consider that in today's discussion. Then we're going to look at recommendations to address any remaining concerns. And then uh, finally, we'll look at any other feedback from today's committee meeting and incorporate that into uh, the totality of feedback um, for us to send this policy back to PRC. All right, so that being said, um, I'd like to, uh, we're gonna remain on this slide for a while um, and just start our discussion um, around uh, what was said in PRC. Uh, we can really incorporate that along with anything else that uh, our committee members feel should be included in the revision. Again, that is why I was sent to um, this committee to, to provide additional feedback. Um, and then once we have our discussion and we come to consensus on uh, what we'll include in that uh, revision for the policy, then we'll be ready to send a package back to PRC. Um, so I'll open it up to uh, the committee at this point to see what kind of uh, input you have as far as revisions to the policy. Mr. Handy, um, pardon me. Yes. One thing, if we wanted to review the uh, proposed changes based on, um, you know, feedback that's already been taken into consideration. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. Got you. All right. And thank you, uh, Ms. Charlie Green. So uh, I believe uh, committee members do have. Um, I believe committee members have uh, the documents from the PRC that you can reference. Um, looking at that document to see if we have uh, revisions that we discussed in PRC that we can include. And this is Ms. Lichter. I just want to make sure I'm looking at the right thing. So that the the document that we have that shows, I think, three changes. I have to toggle back, or four. There was changes proposed by Department of Equity and Culture Performance. So there were four changes that were. Is that what we're trying to get feedback on those four, or am I looking at the wrong thing? Uh, yes, Ms. Lichter. That's. I would think that's a good starting point. So that's right. What you're looking at is the original recommendations from um, my department, equity and cultural proficiency. So that's really was a starting point for PRC. So I think we can start there um, and then we can um, move on with any additional recommendations. So I think that's a good starting point. Okay, thank you. Mr. Hedges, like go ahead. No, I apologize, please, if you would like no, no. to. No, I, I was just saying, I don't have any feedback on those four. Um, that are on that doc on that draft policy analysis document. Okay. And, and just to refresh everyone's memory, I just want to just just point out a couple of things, if you don't mind. Uh, when the policy was reviewed in PRC, there were some recommendations around language, uh, specifically as we refer to students, and so those were already incorporated. Um, I believe it was around. Um, and Mr. Handy, you can correct me whether or not uh, each student, every student, that sort of thing. And so that information was incorporated. I just wanted to call board members attention to that. We also received feedback just about language and making sure that it was uh, strengthened and that it communicated accurately and adequately the board's commitment to equity. And so there are some uh, adjustments in language um, I just want to call attention to. Uh, we received uh, some feedback related to, um, you know, adjusting adjusting language, uh, particularly as it uh, referred to hate speech, to include conveyance electronically, and so that addition was made. And then there was a recommendation related to language and making sure that uh, English language learners and their families had access uh, to content resources uh, and activities. And for that, we uh, included related policy around parent and community engagement, which specifically speaks to providing access through multiple languages to all families. And so I just wanted to highlight those so that as board members are considering adjustments, do know that those adjustments, the ones described, have already been made and should be incorporated in what you're looking at. And so what we're seeking from board members now are additional changes that you would like to see and certainly any questions that you may have. And then to the extent possible, if there are changes you would like to see uh, specific language beginning with a verb or beginning with the, the word that you would like to, to use so that we can incorporate that uh, according to your wishes. Um, thank you, Ms. Mr. Handy, for allowing me to interrupt. I just wanted to make sure that everyone was completely clear on what the charge was in front of us. Yes, thank you, Ms. Charlie Green. I appreciate the clarity. Thank you. This is board member from Pong. Um, I think also for the board members who were not part of the uh, PRC, one of the reasons that um, we as board members and committee members had looked at bringing this back to um, this particular meeting was because of our equity training that we've had and looking at incorporating some of the um, items that we had talked about, as well as I know specifically um, the current sections two for definitions and three for standards. Um, originally when this came before the PRC, there was talk about removing these. Um, I thought that the section two in particular with definitions was 
um, something that we should actually keep in the policy. Um, it helped us as far as when we had our training and being able to make sure that we were all on the same page. And then as far as uh, section three, the standards, um, there was concern about is this too much language related to operations? And so I do think there's good material in there, but possibly could we look at uh, making it so that it was more governance related? Thank you, Ms. Rampong. Uh, any committee members have any uh, comments um, based on what Ms. Rampong has shared? Um, this is Ms. Lichter. What was the idea behind getting rid of the definitions? I mean, I agree when reading them that th I think they should be included. I'm just curious why they recommended to take those out just to shorten the document. Uh, so, so I can speak to that, uh, Ms. Lichter. So um, in preparing recommendations from my department, uh, for this document, I did look at, I want to make sure I'm getting the policy and rule correct, uh, 4100, uh, 4100, which is um, employee responsibilities. Again, I hope I'm getting the, the name right. It really it sets a precedent for this particular policy. It's structured the same way. So in that policy, the belief statements are in the policy, the definitions and the standards are in the rule. So, um, and I know we have various policies and rules and they're structured differently, uh, but that was the rationale for uh, moving the uh, the definitions and the standards, removing them from the policy. Um, again, the rule won't be developed until the policy is finalized, but if you look at the policy, um, the policy uh, analysis, it does talk about, um, you know, language around executing the policy will be removed. Um, so that is the thought that, it, you know, it would, go into the operation side of policy and rule and um, thus taking it out of the policy. OK, thank you for that um, background. You're welcome. So, um, Mr. Handy, I don't know if you want to uh, elaborate a little bit further, just that we did receive a question about including at minimum a definition for equity in the policy. And we did, um, you know, make inquiries into that, and we we have a follow up conversation related to that. So I did not want board members to believe that we had not followed up. We just have not gotten um, um, a conclusive response, and we will, you know, certainly continue to seek that. And as this policy moves forward to, um, you know, back to PRC, uh, we we can certainly share that information as well. So I did want to note that. Yes, thank you, Ms. Charlie Green. And just to elaborate a little bit more. Um, from the from the early so there there was some conversation I was having with the law office um, again as Ms. Charlie Green stated by the time we get back to PRC with the policy I'm confident I, I'm confident we'll have a, a definitive response the early read though is that we would not have a definition that would have that would appear in both documents the policy and the rule so there was some discussion on let's you know like the term equity perhaps at the least equity should be defined in the policy um, if we did that, we wouldn't have it defined again in the rule. Um, so that's the early uh, read on what I've received. But we, again, just want to make sure there's clarity between um, what the law office stating, is stating in my understanding. So I'll make sure I inform the committee and then uh, this committee, and then we'll have that uh, clarified again once we get back to the PRC with this document. Uh, this is Vice Chair Harvey. I have a couple of questions. Uh, being on both committees, one is, um, are you, are you uh, just to be clear, are you saying that the, the, the issue of having a definition on both documents is a matter of uh, convention or preference, or are you saying there's some legal reason <laughs> why that can't be? Mm -hmm. Yes, Ms. Harvey. So, um, with my understanding of the, um, well, let me put it this way: I don't want to. I make. I want to make sure we're not violating any legalities. Also, I want to make sure. I guess we're following uh, protocol around our policies and our rules. So, you know, in seeking our guidance from the law office, it was to make sure um, that we were in proper standing. And then also, you know, as the law office. The role the law office plays with the policy review committee. So, 
just like someone may reach out to me as a liaison if there's a matter of equity um, as it relates to the equity committee. Um, that's how, why I reached out to um, to the law office for some clarity. OK, thank you for that uh, information. The other question I have is just a, a, a question about process. Mm -hmm. So uh, the intention was for this to come to the equity committee to look at how we might uh, strengthen and enhance the board's policy. So we're having that conversation and providing you with input now. Will will we receive, will the equity committee receive the revised policy based on the input that we're providing prior to it, be, to it being sent to the PRC for uh, review and approval to be sent to the full board for first reader? Uh, yeah, thank you, Ms. Harvey. So, um, and please, Ms. Charlie Green, if I'm if I'm misspeaking, please let me know. Uh, the short answer, Ms. Harvey, is yes. So, the idea is that we reach cons that you all reach consensus as a committee. Uh, we're taking note of the recommendations you all state. Then we would uh, have a draft document for this committee to review. So, I would share with you all, you know, via email. You would have that document want to make sure that what I send you is is what you all um, have intended to be in that draft. And then once we are at that point, uh, then I would uh, route it on to um, to PRC. Great, thank you very much. Yeah, you're and, welcome. Uh, hey. Pardon me, Ms. Harvey, please continue. Uh, I was just going to ask uh, the, the other committee members, was there additional feedback? Uh, if they've had time to digest the document or um, do they feel like they need to provide you with feedback ongoing? But Ms. Charlie Green, if you've had a comment or if you need to let us know something, please, please proceed. Um, I, the only thing I would add uh, is that the, uh, at, at present, PRC does not have a date for review of uh, this this policy when it returns. And so I would think that, you know, in answer to your question about receiving a draft and moving forward, uh, it is, you know, the it is before the equity committee now. And so we want to take time as needed to be able to address any concerns you have and certainly to to vet any changes with you. So really just echoing what's been said previously. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, committee members, are there other comments or questions? Any feedback regarding the policy? Um, this Ms. Lichter, I don't have any as long as I'm making sure that I'm reviewing the right document with the revision. So it doesn't seem like there were a lot of revisions at this point. Is that correct? Mr. Handy, is that is that yes, correct? Yes, Ms. Lecture, I'm sorry. Right. Um, yeah. So I believe if you're looking at what was uh, presented to PRC, right. uh, you're correct. Okay. It was, um, okay. I would say, minimum and revision. Um, okay. The one thing we didn't point out is, you know, part of the convention is to remove any gender language from policies as they come up for revision. So um, the uh, reference, there was a reference in the first section to his slash her, and that was changed to there. Okay. Um, and then we had spoken at um, the equity um, workshops we did about, sounds silly, but that each versus every, did did we talk about, we always used to say every, now we're supposed to say each, am I remembering that correctly or backwards? Because I know no, both are still used in here. Yeah, so you are right on that, Ms. Lecter. Thank you for bringing that back up. Um, and that was discussed in PRC. So uh, I would ask the committee, um, and I don't know if we have to make a motion. I, it seems like going with each. Anytime students are mentioned seems to be in line with what we discussed in the workshop, what you all had shared out and what we talked about in PRC. So that is that is a change that I would like to um, make sure where uh, we reach consensus on today. So is, is that what you are looking to do? Change any reference to uh, every or all to each? So when students appear, it says each students, each student rather. 
and the semantics behind every and each, how are you and how what are you seeing as the difference? Uh, so I, I can express my my from my own perspective. Uh, for me, it does help me to visualize a singular student and what I believe is our charge as a system to serve each student. So, you know, um, it helps me again. Sometimes I'll visualize, you know, a student I've actually interacted with, um, and that's where, to me, the each gets to that that level of granularity. That's my perspective. Um, of course, I'll you know yield to uh, committee members on on their thoughts on that thoughts and beliefs. No, I appreciate that. Um, mm -hmm. So You're that welcome. has not been changed yet. It's still the way it originally was with the use of every. Okay. Okay. I'm not sure how other board members feel about it. Is there any disagreement? Well, this is this is uh, Vice Chair Harvey, uh, because the team is going to draft revisions that could be part of the draft and we can make decisions when we vote on the the uh, to adopt the draft as our our policy proposal then or uh, simply now is there anyone in opposition to that change in language uh, hearing none I think we put each in the draft okay All right. Is there is there any other feedback uh, for the team regarding the policy? Um, this is board member from Pong, and so um, I think part of the difficulty is is that we don't have the rule in place to look at these kind of side by side. We've talked about that before as it relates to certain policies. And so I understand that, I guess, as if you want to say protocol, that the rule cannot be finalized until um, the policy is in place. But again, I did believe that there was information coming out of our equity training that we were supposed to incorporate. It was supposed to come over to the equity committee. So I'm trying to look through my notes now. But I guess my question is, is that are we able to send in feedback via email? Um, because I think that was the whole point is that we were supposed to be incorporating um, that information into the policy and it's not readily available right now. So, Miss Charlie Green, would you go ahead? I'm, I'm sorry. Um, yes. Um, so, so the short answer, Ms. Frumprong, and thank you so much for your question, is yes. What we are seeking uh, from board members is specific language that you believe will enhance the policy. And so um, I do know that Mr. Handy and I had opportunity to look over the notes he had from the training, and there was conversation around um, a policy statement, I believe, and I might be misspeaking. Um, Mr. Handy, was it a policy statement or another type of statement uh, right. that was in the notes? Um, so and so, oh, I'm sorry, Mr. No, you please go forward. And so we did review those notes to try to include as much as possible. While uh, whether we call it policy statement, belief statement, or, and I want to make sure I get the language correct uh, before we move too um, much ahead, um, we didn't have specific language. And so that is what we're seeking from board members. We are more than happy to adjust language, but we we do need. Um, from board members consensus on what that language would look like. And so certainly via email or otherwise, we can we can incorporate that. Thank you, I appreciate that. So <clears throat> for example, I'm looking at the notes now, one of the things we talked about where it said, is there a methodology for equity lens? And then what is the tool? So that was something that came up during training. And I guess I'm not sure if that would relate to policy or if that would relate to the role. Um, but that is something that did come up. So um, again, I'll continue to review at least my notes and um, I can send additional feedback via email. Thank you, Ms. Frampong. Um, if I could do a follow up, the um, what Ms. Charlie Green had referred to, uh, just checking my notes. So in the workshop, we uh, we talked about an educational equity core value statement. Uh, we may also want to call that a position statement. Uh, what I recall is that uh, the board members wanted that to be separate from 
the policy. This would be a standalone statement. Um, perhaps it would appear on the BCPS website uh, for that Board of Education page. But that was my recollection. Um, so even in my mind, knowing that we were having this on the agenda today, um, to me, that core value statement development could actually be a separate agenda item for this committee. Uh, but I'll present that to you all to see if you recall differently or if you just want to move in a different direction if you want to put it in the policy. But that was what Ms. Charlie Green was referring to as well. So it was called an ed educational equity core value statement, um, or we could call it a position statement, um, if you will. Thank you. So this is uh, Vice Chair Harvey again. It seems to me that the committee members, given the feedback you provided, may need to um, review and consider uh, the language in the current draft uh, and provide you with some written feedback. Yeah. So can we just set a a deadline for when you'd like to receive that feedback so that we are making sure that the process continues to move forward, but that the committee members have time to really uh, <clears throat> be thoughtful and considerate about this policy because it is such an important foundational policy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you, Ms. Harvey. Uh, yes, I, that would that would work for me. So. What I need to do is uh, set that deadline to your request. Um, so I'm trying to think, I think we talked about the next PRC meeting. I need to check the date on that. Uh, Ms. Charlie Green, I'm thinking we want feedback to be in at least a week before the PRC, maybe even further, maybe. Well, Mr. Handy, I want to just make sure that we are um, meeting uh, the, the um, the ask. So mm -hmm. my recollection from previous conversation is that we would bring a draft back to the equity committee so that we would, you know, incorporate the feedback and then the draft would be discussed, reviewed, approved by the equity committee before being sent back to PRC. And Ms. Gover's on the call. So if Ms. Gover, if I'm off base, you can certainly let me know. To my knowledge, I don't think a date has been set for PRC to review the policy. So I do believe that this committee has opportunity not only to provide feedback and we could provide a deadline to receive it, but also to review the policy with the incorporated feedback prior to it going back to PRC. Ms. Gover, am I correct? Yes, I believe uh, the, the, um, the draft version, the revised one would have to come back to an equity committee in open session. Okay, all right. And so um, we can certainly set a deadline, but I think the, the date that we need to be looking at, Mr. Handy, is the next equity committee meeting. Gotcha. And so certainly if we want to back map from that meeting, the date for which we would receive revision, so we can turn that around and certainly get it to board members to review with ample time to digest prior to the board meeting. And I mean, not the board meeting, pardon me, the equity committee meeting would be my recommendation and certainly open to any feedback from all on the call. Okay, understood. Thank you, Ms. Charlie Green and Ms. Gover. So committee members, just for your consideration that if we are looking at our next equity committee meeting, that would be on March 14th. So this is Vice Chair Harvey again. Today is February 22nd. Is the committee in agreement with having feedback uh, to um, Mr. Handy and team by February 29th. That gives us seven days a week. Is there anyone in disagreement? Can we have okay. a little bit longer since it's March 14th? Um, could we have to the 7th? So is that enough time, uh, Mr. Handy and team? for you all to take in our feedback and incorporate it into a policy for a March 14th presentation? Um, thank you for that, Ms. Harvey um, and Ms. Rampong. So I believe that's maybe a little closer to that date than we want to get. Maybe we can negotiate. Can we go earlier yeah. in that week? We can split the difference. Okay, okay. What? Uh, 
March 3rd? March 4th is the Monday. Okay, March 4th. Does that work? Yes. Okay, so everybody gets about 10 days. Okay. So um, by March 4th, uh, if we can get it in sooner, uh, committee members, that would probably, uh, Mr. Handy would probably be very thankful for that, but mm -hmm. we have until March 4th uh, to get uh, our feedback uh, to the team. So thank you very much for that. Yeah, thank you, everyone. Uh, are there any other comments before we continue with the agenda? OK, thank you very much. The last item on the agenda is announcements. The next equity committee meeting is scheduled for Thursday, March 14th, 2024 at 4 p.m. The next equity uh, count. Wait a minute. The next equity council meeting, uh, equity committee meeting with the equity council is scheduled for Thursday, March 21st, 2024 at 5.30 p.m. And please remember committee members to get your feedback to Mr. Handy on the uh, equity policy 0100 by March 4th. Is there any further business? Hearing none, the meeting is now adjourned. Thank you everyone for your work and thank you for joining us. Have a good evening. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you everyone. Thank you. Good, good evening. evening.